Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and there's one thing that I've noticed that Flat Earthers continuously fail to understand. Well, that is apart from physics, chemistry, biology, orbital mechanics, gravity, pressure, density, Riley. One eternity later. Refraction, Snell's law, quantum mechanics, and how to tie their shoelaces. But apart from all that, they do not understand big numbers. I should put a beanie on. Be right back. So now that I've got my hair to stay in place, we all know that flat earthers don't understand big numbers, or numbers in general. But what do I mean? Well, let me give you some examples. So the first is one that we've all heard. And that is that the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles per hour, and if it were doing that, then we'd all get thrown off. Now, a thousand miles an hour does seem like a really big number, but that is still only one revolution per day. When it comes to the things that flat earthers are thinking about, like water flying off a tennis ball being spun at a really fast speed, they are thinking about the velocity of the surface, not the angular velocity, which is what they should be thinking about. Instead, what they do is they hear this number of, oh, a thousand miles per hour, and think, well, a tennis ball is going much slower than a thousand miles per hour on its surface, so therefore, a thousand miles an hour applied to the Earth would mean that all the water would be spinning off the Earth. And the thousand miles an hour misunderstanding also applies to other things like flight. They seem to think that because the Earth is spinning so fast, that Coriolis must affect things like hot air balloons. And yes, I'm looking at you, Nathan Thompson. But of course, the Earth is so big that the height that you'd have to go for this to have any kind of noticeable effect is very high. We're using some really scientific language today, aren't we? So another one that's related to the Earth's movement that flat earthers often bring up is the speed that the Earth is moving at. They'll say that the Earth is going around the Sun at 67,000 kilometers per hour, or sometimes even 66.6 thousand kilometers per hour. And they'll say that the Sun is going around the galaxy at 720,000 kilometers per hour. And then they'll say that the galaxy is going millions of kilometers per hour through space. And then they'll ask, why don't we feel the Earth's motion? And why don't the constellations always change every night? And my response to that would be, well, you don't feel motion. When you're in a plane, it doesn't feel all that different to when you're in a car. It doesn't feel like you're going any faster because you don't feel motion. Now, you do feel acceleration, for example, when a plane takes off or when a car is accelerating, but that's acceleration and that is different to a constant velocity. Now, as for why don't all the constellations change every night, well, there's a simple answer. They're really fucking far away! It would be like, I don't know, driving along in a car and seeing mountains off in the distance that don't appear to move at all and saying, well, we can't be driving at 100 kilometers per hour because the mountains over there aren't moving. Now, given enough time, the mountains in the distance will appear to move. Given enough time, the stars in the night sky will appear to move. However, it's not going to happen immediately, and you're not going to notice it with a cursory glance. For context, the closest star to Earth is four light years away. That means that it would take four years to get there if we were traveling at the speed of light. We are not traveling at the speed of light. We are only traveling at about 0.07% the speed of light. This means that if we were traveling directly towards the closest star, it would take a long time to get there, approximately 5,000 years-ish. This is of course ignoring the fact that constellations do change throughout time. In fact, the constellations have changed throughout the course of human history. And also, you can measure the distance to stars. All you have to do is measure the parallax between stars from one time of the year to the opposite time of year. Do some trigonometry and you've just figured out the distance to a star. Of course, flat earthers aren't going to do that because they don't like maths. Oh, and the speed of the galaxy is completely irrelevant because all the stars within the night sky are in the galaxy, which means that they're moving along with the galaxy. But speaking of stars, because our sun is a star, 
they also have an issue with the sun being 150 million kilometers away from Earth. They'll say it's something along the lines of, oh, well, if the sun is 150 million kilometers away from Earth, then why do we get crepuscular rays? Well, the answer to that particular question is perspective. You say it enough that you should know that it is legitimately an answer sometimes. But more often than not, they'll use it to say something along the lines of, well, why is the sun 5 million kilometers further away in summer than it is in winter? Checkmate, globe tards. This is because they seem to think that if the sun is a million kilometers closer to Earth, then it should be summer. Whereas if the sun is a million kilometers further away from Earth, then it should be winter. This is obviously not the case. For starters, seasons are caused by the Earth's tilt, not its proximity to the sun. In New Zealand, when we experience winter, the northern hemisphere gets summer. The question then becomes, okay, well why doesn't the distance to the sun severely affect the Earth's temperature? And the answer is because... The sun is really fucking far away! I feel like there's some kind of common theme here. But yes, when considering the difference that 5 million kilometers will make, you have to consider how far away is it in the first place. On average, the sun is about 150 million kilometers away. And 5 million kilometers compared to that isn't all that much. It's about 3% of the total distance. And 3% of the total distance really isn't going to make that much of an impact on how much energy actually reaches Earth. Especially considering the fact that energy fall off is more of a inverse squared law kind of thing. So those are just a couple of examples where flat earthers see big numbers and their brain executes pseudo shutdown now. And also, down in the comment section, let me know if there are any examples that I missed, because I'm sure I missed some examples. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. What Jesus, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Wolfie, and Mori. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching. Math, the globe model, the second law of thermodynamics, converting meters into kilometers, triangles, entropy, a 15 degree per hour drift, crayons do not a good breakfast to make, reality, logical fallacies, Australia, Antarctica, the scientific method, human behavior.